This is TV Podcast Industries. We're back with our 800th episode of TV Podcast Industries and lots and lots of quizzes. You were right. You were right. I was wrong. You were right. Welcome back, fellow industrialists, to TV Podcast Industries. We're at the end of the year, and we are doing our 800th episode spectacular <laughs> with lots and lots of pub quizzes. We will have our Secret Invasion pub quiz, our Wheel of Time Tavern quiz, our Ahsoka Cantina quiz, and, of course, our Gen V Student Bar quiz. I'm one of your hosts, Derek. Hello there, fellow defenders, wheelies, rebels, and boys and girls, as well as quizzers and industrialists to boot. Mm -hmm. I'm one of your other hosts, John. And rounding out the trio of tavern keepers, of pub keepers, and everything else in between. Is it a pub keeper? No, it's not. It's a landlord. Rounding landlord. out the awesome Innkeeper, landlord. maybe. Innkeepers. Pub keeper. Every it's all, it's all the same. Yeah, I'm Chris. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> It's off the rails, and we're only less than two minutes in. Yes, we have taken the fact that we have uh, not gotten round to doing the results of all the pub quizzes we've mm -hmm. done since Secret Invasion to chuck them all in to a celebration of goodie giving uh, for our 800th episode. Uh, so, yeah, great stuff uh, to come. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we've got lots and lots of uh, of. Uh, great goodies to give away uh, during this uh, during this podcast. And yeah, exactly as John said, we thought we'd coincide it with our 800th episode because there's nothing better for celebrating your 800th episode than giving something back, right? Exactly. Especially to all of our lovely listeners who've been following along with us for all of these w amazing episodes uh, of, of these big shows throughout this year. So, so we'll go through them one by one. Each of our pub quizzes will be giving the pub quiz questions and pub quiz answers, of course. And then we'll be si deciding who the winner is of the goodie pack uh, that we have for each of the shows. Um, one of the things I will mention, of course, is some of the questions will be spoilerific for the uh, for the shows that we're covering. So if you haven't watched the shows uh, and are intending to watch them, um, I guess don't listen to the pub quiz questions, right? Oh, you can yeah. if you want. Yeah. Oh, or or we're not your parents. If you really want to, you can, and uh, just don't give out to us in the comment section. <laughs> yes, exactly, exactly. And of course, just think of us as your podcast Santas. Ho, 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 indeed. Exactly. Do you call in a ho? <laughs> <laughs> you, Chris. <laughs> okay, that's fair, that's fair, that's fair. But this is also going to replace our year-end wrap-up. Uh, we're not going to do another year-end wrap-up because we're talking about four different shows here. So we may talk a little bit about uh, some of the shows we covered, of course, this year as uh, as memories are sparked by some of the questions we asked um, on the shows that we covered uh, up to five months ago at this stage. I know. Yeah, so, a so, long, so. long time. A lot yeah. done uh, this year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe not the most we've ever done in a year. I think possibly lockdown mm -hmm. uh, could have uh, contributed to significant amount of podcasts, but certainly. Um, I think they suddenly came thick and fast Deserted. from around June where we were covering two and sometimes there were crossovers of even three podcasts uh, for different TV shows at a time. So hence why, unfortunately, uh, I guess we got waylaid with everything else, mm -hmm. uh, including life in there as well. Uh, with uh, coming back on the quizzes. So, mm -hmm. but of course, all good things come to those who wait. So we are coming down your chimneys uh, with our sack full of goodies mm -hmm. uh, for our pub quiz extravaganza uh, for our 800th episode. Absolutely. And of course, a reminder, if you haven't listened to any of the uh, podcasts that we're going to be talking about, you can hear them all uh, through TV Podcast Industries. Pop on over to our website at tvpodcastindustries.com. You can subscribe to each of the podcasts over there. I think there's one for each of the uh, the shows that we're talking about as well. So uh, you can go check them out over there. Or pop on over to our Facebook group at facebook.com slash groups slash TV Podcast Industries, where you can chat with us about any of the shows as well. Exactly. And of course, uh, fellow quizzers, if you don't have a chimney, we will be 
exchanging our way through your uh, heat exchange system. Yes. We'll vaporize into heat with our sack of goodies. And then back again, because we're magic. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Heat vaporize systems are all the latest rage on this podcast. But if you want to give back as well, don't forget you can head on over to patreon.com slash TV podcast where you can support our little old podcast going into 2024. Uh, as we kind of come to you with all the latest and greatest podcasts next year or just want to give us a one-off Christmas Prezi or Kwanzaa Prezi or any type of holiday gift, you can head on over to buymeacoffee.com slash TVPI where you can buy us a coffee or multiple coffees. It's up to you. Uh, all graciously accepted. Thank you so much. Or just share the podcast. Tell your friends. Do the Spotify wrap up. Tell everyone. Tag us. Show us around. Cause sharing the podcast is what gentlemen in this festive spirit. It is of sharing course, the sharing. holiday love. Yes. Sharing yes. the festive love. Exactly. With jingle bells to boot. Exactly. Great stuff. Let's get straight into it with our secret invasion pub quiz. Tell me something I don't know. That's kind of the question we were asking with the pub quiz, wasn't it? Yeah, pretty yeah, much. I think so. Yeah, tell pretty me much. something we don't know. Um, okay, we will start out this section with a review of the podcast uh, from Panuski over on Apple Podcasts uh, on TV Podcast Industries. Panuski said, uh, Nick Fury, five stars. I really enjoyed your Secret Invasion coverage. Nick Fury's never been a favorite of mine, but through your eyes, I had more appreciation for the show. Excellent stuff, uh, Panuski. Nice. Uh, that, yeah, that's really good because as well, I'm seeing a lot more kind of uh, positive reviews or I've heard a lot more as time has gone by actually mm. on Secret Invasion. I think there was quite a lot of negativity around it or mm. just maybe a bit of neutral, good take it or leave it kind of attitude. And I do think um, more recently, and it was you, Derek, I think, that got me looking around this because mm -hmm. uh, of a, another podcast that you had listened to um, that really, really enjoyed it. And they don't normally cover TV shows. They're yeah. mainly movies yeah. um, and American podcasts. And so I just kind of looked. So I probably got, you know, a lot more love like it deserved, um, mm -hmm. I think, than, uh, you know, what it got at the time. Yeah, it was one of those uh, one of those shows that really fell victim to uh, what is now becoming um, the Marvel attacks. So anything released by Marvel automatically has a lower score than anything released by any of the studio. Uh, and overall, you know, this is one of the shows that I really enjoyed this year. Um, and but I was predisposed to like it. So uh, my biggest disappointment about Secret Invasion is that it didn't land with the audience, um, unfortunately. So uh, so I'm hopeful that uh, people are have been watching that. And um, we know from our listeners they've been they enjoyed Secret Invasion. Not the best of all of the MCU shows, of course. Course, but in general, uh, those that watched it enjoyed it and yeah, enjoyed definitely. the coverage. Yeah. And I definitely enjoyed it. Uh, absolutely. But let's kick into the pub quiz. As we said, that's the, the main focus of this, of course, we have one question for each of the episodes. And the fellow defender with the most answers right will get a copy of the recent collected Secret Invasion comic and a Nick Fury Funko Pop. Yes. But I do have Ooh. to caveat that with subject to availability. Um, well, so that is true. It does depend on where the person is living, because I may not be able to get it delivered to them. That so, is true. Uh, I will come up with something else, but that, uh, if that is not available. But I uh, just want to say, uh, if I can't get it and I can't get it sent to you, we'll think of something else for you. It's always the problem. Like, you see so much cool stuff that's on American mm -hmm. uh, merch websites. Yeah. You go to order it and they don't deliver it outside the US or yeah. they don't, they won't accept payment from a non us card mm -hmm. or if you try and get a friend in the us to do it and put your shipping address in they won't allow that either and it's like damn you yeah. red tape i just want to give you money exactly. i know exactly. my damn money uh, yeah. exactly yeah my, my friend so ronan uh, got a t-shirt uh, that he really liked on an american website it ended up costing him 115 dollars yeah. for just the shipping and <laughs> uh, and oh. the import costs <laughs> poor ronan for a for a 10 euro t-shirt <laughs> anyway, question one on episode one of Secret Invasion was, what do Maria Hill and Nick Fury usually share over chess? And the answer to that question was the truth. And nothing but the truth. Yes, some uh, suspect moment uh, there between Maria Hill and, uh, and Nick Fury as to whether 
who was telling the truth. Yeah, excellent. On to question two. What US city did Nick Fury and his mom take long journeys to? Mm -hmm. It was Detroit. Yes, it was. On to question number three. How does Fury like his eggs in the morning? The answer was poached like his enemies. There you Mm. go. There you go. Question four. What is the name of the whiskey shared by Fury and Rhodes? And how much did Nick Fury say that it cost? The answer to that was Pappy Van Winkle. And he said it cost $5,000. We had a look after the show. We couldn't uh, talk about it on the the episode. But uh, that is, of course, a real whiskey in the real world. And the cost at the time when we saw it was about $13,000. Yeah. And it was significantly higher. And higher. Yeah. That was just one price level. What a weird yeah. name, though. Papi Van Winkle, yeah. yeah. When, when we get super rich and famous from podcasting about all these shows, we'll <laughs> buy a bottle. There you go. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> It'll be our Nick Fury celebration bottle. Excellent. That'll be a pretty good one. Yes. Um, yeah, I did see in um, the Fall of the House of Usher, the, the Mike Flanagan show, uh, they had a bottle of cognac in there. There's about $2 million a bottle. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that was the gemmed one mm-hmm. as well. The bottle was all had diamonds and stuff. Exactly. Yeah. So uh, maybe we can aim for that one too. I'm probably, sure, sure. Yeah, <laughs> probably arrived on the back of a unicorn as well. Maybe. Uh, yeah. Uh, on to question five. What does Sonia Falsworth say podcasts are full of? The answer, men gaslighting and threatening murder. Yes. Murder? Thankfully, almost everybody uh, who sent in a response to this question uh, did say, not our podcasts, not all podcasts, (laughs) most podcasts. (laughs) Murder? (laughs) That's Olivia Colman in in Hot Fuzz, isn't it? Rounding out the season of questions and the actual season of Nick Fury. Question six. What are the two hospital units at either end of the corridor where Nick Fury confronts Rhodes? The answer was diagnostic testing and coronary angiogram. Excellent. Excellent. We did get a response from Dr. Bob on this, who said if those two... um (laughs) <laughs> if those two locations were beside each other in a hospital, uh, the ho- don't go to that hospital because, uh, yeah, they're they're not real and they shouldn't be beside each other if they, if they are. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> uh, diagnostic testing. I love that. Um, it's a place where we diagnose by testing. Yes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Definitely made up for the hospital. Great stuff. We had a bunch of entries in for the Secret Invasion pub quiz, uh, but not everybody got the question right. Exactly. Yeah. We we had Dr. Bob Phillips, Felipe Friencio, Will Walton, Isadora Maya Sousa, Victor Sellers, Salima Kisler, Coffee and Vodka, and Lisa Weinrich, who all got all answers right for the Secret Invasion pub quiz. Yeah, congratulations, everyone, for uh, getting all the answers correct. Mm Mm-hmm. Yes, congrats on everyone. Now, let's put it into the electronic tambula that is good old Google. Mm -hmm. Hey, Google, give me a random number between one and eight. Here's a random number, two. Two! Ha, 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 ha. Yes, that is the one and only Felipe Florencio. Congratulations, Felipe, on being the winner uh, of the pub quiz. The Christmas spirits are obviously shining down upon you, uh, and you'll be uh, will be in contact uh, in respect to the goodies. Yeah, so congratulations. Excellent stuff. Congratulations, Felipe. I'll be in contact with you on your email address to provide you the details of uh, what the prizes are. As I said, uh, we should be able to get you a copy of Secret Evasion Collected Edition plus a Nick Fury Funko Pop. Uh, So I'll get your details from you for delivery of those. Uh, Yes. Well done. Yes, well done. And unfortunately, we can't get you a Maria Hill one because she's dead. She's no more. She is like the dead pirate in Monty Python, deceased. Spoilers, Has Chris. Left us. Hey, we already said we're doing spoilers. Yeah. <laughs> we did, technically. <laughs> to be fair. But yeah, it's not that would be a fun one. To end on our secret invasion. Because I'm still salty as hell about that. Really? Mm-hmm. I think I think I'm over that. I think uh, I think overall um I'm happy enough with how that how that worked out in the show. Yeah, I mean I'm kind of 
agnostic. Right. <laughs> Look at that. All three different perspectives there. Brilliant stuff. Thanks so much to everybody that entered the Secret Invasion pub quiz. Uh, we do have lots more opportunities in the podcast here to win uh, win one of the sets of goodies uh, because next up, we're going to be going to a galaxy far, far away with our Ahsoka Cantina quiz. <laughs> Yes, fellow quizzes, we are in the world or the galaxy of Star Wars mm-hmm. for uh, this part of the podcast. But first up, we have some feedback uh, that we thought we would share from Liam Sinclair. Yes, we do. We have an email that we got in from Liam Sinclair after he finished watching Ahsoka. He says, hi, Akarta. Hope you're all well. I know I'm behind, but I do have to defend Zener- Senator Giano. But first, thanks for the show. I'm not deep in the lore of Star Wars, and your filling in the blanks has definitely helped me enjoy Ahsoka much more. Now, the Senator, Giano. Maybe it's my perspective as a retired politician, but I'm totally on his side. Government bodies, especially well-armed ones, need oversight from elected representatives. Agreed hierarchies only work when those with their finger on the trigger accept that the oversight is for the greater good on behalf of the people. Soldiers who decide they know best and ignore democratically elected representatives don't usually end up coming off well in history books. My feeling is Senator Giano will be an important good guy at some future point. All this fuss only being for the greater good of the Republic. Public. He is annoying, though. I know that this is too late for you to discuss, but the retired part of my politician status has left me with a bit more time on my hands. Best, Liam. Thanks so much for sending in the feedback to us, Liam. It's a different perspective than we had uh, when we discussed mm. the show, of course. And I suppose there is a little bit... I hinted at it, I reckon. You did hint at the possibility that he could be a good guy, but there is one piece of information that someone who doesn't watch the animated shows may not be aware of, which is that the character of Giono is um, connected to another one of the Star Wars animated series, Star Wars Resistance, uh, where he is connected to one of the antagonists in the show, let, let us say. So um, so he may not necessarily be on the level, uh, which is part of that knowledge people came with seeing him on the show. And also, as a Star Wars fan, people who've been watching you know, this, these movies and shows for 40 years, you see the plucky heroes coming in and going, right, we need to go and stop the bad guy. And you've got uh, a politician standing in the way of them. Gives a bit of flashbacks to um, to a particular senator who eventually became the emperor of the galaxy, uh, blocking Spoilers. people from, from doing those uh, those um, those actions that you'd want to see your heroes do. So, and so while it might be realistic in the real world uh, that a senator is going for the greater good, in this case, uh, Giono, maybe working for the greater bad, let's say. Yeah, possibly. Um, yes. For, I mean, look, I think, as I say, we kind of hinted at the fact about oversight, and but I, but at the same time, um, yes, you're kind of going, but he's going against Sindula, mm-hmm. you know, General Sindula here. She's yeah. awesome and a hero and a rebel. Um, so, but nonetheless, I still hold out hope. He's also very annoying. An individual senator should be shouting down a witness at a, a, a giving their testimony. Oh, uh, have you seen? I've seen. I, I absolutely seen the Rocks committee. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. Um, but yeah, I think it was give a give a bit of the stage. There would be somebody calling time on his uh, on his attacks on Sindula trying to throw her out before she got a word out. So yeah, it can get fruity. It can. It can. Brilliant stuff. But thanks so much, Liam, for uh, for sending in your thoughts. Uh, please, to anybody else who wants to send in any of the thoughts on the shows that we've covered, you can email us to feedback at tvpodcastindustries dot com as well. Yeah. Thanks, Liam. Yep, thank you so much, Liam. But back to the Star Wars Ahsoka Cantina quiz. Uh, The fellow rebel with the most answers right will get a Star Wars Ahsoka mug and a copy of the Ahsoka audiobook on Audible, read by Ashley Eckstein, who originally played Ahsoka in Star Wars Rebels. Yep. Excellent stuff. And, of course, Star Wars The Cloud Wars. Apologies. Uh, of course, she was in Star Wars Cloud Wars <laughs> and Rebels. So, yes, same actress. Um, but, of course, I will say, again, subject to availability. If you don't have access to Audible, I can't send you on a copy of uh, of the book. So um, I will, of course, be in contact with the person who gets the most questions right, um, which we'll go through now. Yeah. First off, let's start with our question one. What are the two types of lethal animals that appear in the mural dedicated in honor of the rebels? It is, of course, the Loth wolves and Loth cats uh, that we saw fluting around Mm -hmm. um, in uh, the Ahsoka. And, of course, loads of them in uh, the Rebels animated show whilst Mm -hmm. they're on lethal. 
Absolutely. Speaking of Lothcats, our chapter two question was, how many Lothcats heads pop up out of the long grass on Lothal? And the answer was two. Two little kitties. Mm Mm-hmm. Yes. Moving on to question number three for episode number three. What Jedi technique does Huang believe Sabine Wren is not ready for? The answer is Satoshi. Yes, Satoshi, uh, which is a reference to the blind swordsman uh, Zatoichi. And I heard loads and loads of people uh, and uh, loads and loads of articles uh, calling it Zatoichi, even though it's uh, spelt differently. It's just a reference. It's not specifically named after Zatoichi because it doesn't belong in the same galaxy, right? We're in a different that galaxy. True. So they would have no idea uh, who Zatoichi is. It is, is a galaxy far, far yeah. away. It is. It is. Like Marmite and Vegemite, they shouldn't be together. Well, definitely not, but I don't know how those two connect. Anyway, John, do you want to give us the chapter four question? Yes, question four. How many X-Wing fighters accompany Hera's ship, the ghost, to the Denab system? The answer, five. Five X-Wing fighters. And I don't think many of them survive their encounter uh, yeah. arriving into the Denab system. They don't. And this was a really interesting one because I think almost everybody um, had challenges uh, seeing how many were there. Lots of people thinking there was four originally and then coming back and revising their answers back to uh, to back to five. So uh, good question, John. Yeah. As always. <laughs> Question number five. What are the coordinates that Chopper gives Jason to locate Ahsoka? The coordinates were 323 Mark 157. No idea if those are coordinates for anything uh, anything of interest in the Star Wars galaxy. Presume not. It's on a particular planet. I guess it's like a GPS coordinate yeah. or something like that. Or latitude and longitude for... Uh, the planet there that they were on. Oh, of course, yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm just wondering if there's any Easter egg reference that we're missing. Probably, Probably <laughs> but not one that I am aware of. Yeah. You telling me you don't know Mark down the road who gets us coffee? Mark 157, I remember him. Yeah, Mark 157, there you go, see, that's it. And he's getting 323 coffees? Mm-hmm. Exactly. Wow. <laughs> he's a yeah. runner. He's a long-time runner. It's from all the donations to uh, buy me a coffee. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Question number six. How do the Great Mothers describe Sabrine to Grand Admiral Thrawn? Mm. The answer is a loose thread. Yes, a loose thread. Probably not the worst thing she's been called. True, but um, definitely caused some problems for Grand Admiral Thrawn there (laughs) when she arrived, right? (laughs) Definitely. Uh, To question seven, fellow rebels, what class of shuttle is Ahsoka's class of ship as called out by Captain Enoch, Mm -hmm. it is a T9 shuttle. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. And if you uh, happen to see the Lego uh, build, uh, you'll probably have gotten that one really quickly because it is called a T9 shuttle there as well. (laughs) And the final question on Chapter 8 of Ahsoka is, what is the call sign of the Night Trooper that Ezra finds and impersonates? The answer is LS757. I really like that. I I like that Ezra does his usual impersonation of a of a an imperial officer yeah um, that's a, a really standard thing that he would do throughout uh rebels it was something that he'd do every couple of episodes uh take on the persona and the outfit of a of a uh imperial yeah and i always liked that he tended to go with uh, a speezer mm-hmm. uh imperial uniform yes he did. with the square helmet yes he did yes he did uh, but this time a night trooper great stuff uh we have lots of entries once again uh for the ahsoka at pub quiz so thanks so much to everybody that's answered yeah we have seven uh entrants that uh got all the answers correct so congratulations to all seven mm-hmm. they are suzanne nelson will walton dr bob phillips isadora maya souza philippe florencio uh, coffee and vodka and lisa winrich excellent stuff chris Do you want to put us out of our misery and let us know who won the Ahsoka Cantina quiz? Yes, E. Tombola. Here we come. Yes, happy to. Hey, Google, randomly give me a number between one and seven. 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 Ha, ha, ha. Well, congratulations, Eliza Winrich. Uh, You are the winner of the Ahsoka Cantina quiz. So those goodies will be speeding their way in a T9 shuttle to you, no <laughs> doubt. Maybe not included yeah. uh, the T9 shuttle. Uh, yes, I'll be in contact with you later uh, to get your details for the Audible book and for the mug to get them uh, sent out to you as soon as I can. Brilliant stuff. 
I think it's time to get a bit more medieval here uh, on the TV, TV podcast yes, industry's age The oldie episode. TV podcast yes. industry. Yes, fantastical, if you will. Yes. It's fantasy. High fantasy, my goodness. That's true. It actually fantasy. could be futuristic, uh, as, yeah. we've been, uh, as we've been talking about on our Wheel of Time podcast. So let's head on over to our Wheel of Time Season 2 Tavern Quiz. Oh, a bottle of wine. They should let me work through one a week. It's been a while since I could have a drink with someone. Sorry, are you coming on to me? Oh, please. Move, 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 move. Come on. Yes, any time anyone offers me a drink, I do ask, are they coming on to me? It is a typical Irish thing, you do know. Yes, it is. Uh, it's a hazard of going to a pub. It is. Yes, that's Matt there and Min uh, giving us our intro to our uh, our pub quiz. Um, yeah, and the yes. The M&Ms of the, the Wheel of the Time. The M&Ms of the Wheel of Time. <laughs> M&Ms of yes. my God. <laughs> does that make Min the green M M&M? and M? But what M M&M and M does that make Matt? I'm curious. Is he the brown one, the yellow one, the red one? I'm presuming the he's one? the uh, the peanut M M&M. and <laughs> M. He could be. I'm not going to explain Full that. Of nuts. I have no idea. <laughs> yes, fellows, we have a number of entries, and remember, the fellow wheelies with the most answers right get a copy of the first two audiobooks. In the Wheel of Time series on Audible, read by Moraine herself, Rosamund Pike. And again, this is subject to availability about where you are, etc, etc, etc. But don't worry, because if not, we'll find something else suitable in the Wheel of Time genre. Absolutely. I think one of the real shocking things to me, is considering Wheel of Time is a, a prime video show, is that how little um, collectibles there are available for the Wheel of Time on Prime, you know, on Amazon Prime. Why would you not have a massive store filled with loads and loads of items? But, you know, I guess uh, Wheel of Time caps are not something that uh, go well with Wheel of Time fans. But I thought I'd find loads more. Yeah, it, it's weird, isn't it? I guess, I think Bezos just likes shiny objects. Um, yeah. Sort of, oh, must do this, must do that, must shoot something off into space. Mm. Oh, must do the other. That's Pretty Elon cool. Musk. Yes. Wrong one. <laughs> I guess they all do it in the end. <laughs> but they're not like selling shiny objects, which is what, I, what yeah. I'm looking for. It's weird. Yeah. Anyway, at least we have a wonderful audiobook from uh, from Rosamund Pike doing um, doing the first two books in the Wheel of Time series. Uh, they are fantastic. They've gotten great reviews as well. So if you haven't read the series, uh, hopefully we'll be able to give those to you. Yes. Now, let's kick it off with the first question from episode one. How many marks in total does Doman leave with after speaking with Moraine in Varen's house? The answer is 11 marks. Now, this is a tough one. Mm -hmm. He got one mark for the poem and 10 to assist with him getting away safely from his tales. Yeah, and Doman's that trader who ended off... um in uh, with Lanfear trying to get rid of the other seals mm-hmm. uh, towards the mm-hmm. end before Lanfear uh, realised that they had been broken already. Yes. But uh, so yes, uh, good to have him pop up at sort of bookends of of the series. Absolutely, absolutely. Our episode two question: What two moves would Errol the patient do to Yan the orderly the next time he sees him? Errol says. Parting the silk and reaping the barley before he can write himself. Uh, those are the those are the two moves that he was going to do. So I uh, really like that. Those are um, quite detailed in the book uh, as to what parting the silk and reaping the barley are. So uh, a nice little call out for those. Yep. Cat on a roof and many others are also in that too. Mm-hmm. I love cat on the roof. That's yeah. just the more fun one for me. Yeah. yeah. And but- I guess if you've got a flaming sword, it could be cat on a hot tin roof. Maybe. Exactly. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> but on to question three from the third episode. What wine does Legain request from Rand before he'll help him to control the one power? It is Gildam wine. Uh, which is a fruity red with uh, <laughs> hints of black currant and plum, I believe. Maybe. Um, I'm joking. Yeah, I have no idea. If it was Game of Thrones, you'd know, because they uh, they did put out a whole series of wines based on yeah. all the houses of Game of Thrones. But uh, again, Prime Video don't seem yeah. to want money, uh, so they haven't put out <laughs> wines based on all of the things mentioned in, uh, in Wheel of Time. Yeah. Or I guess maybe a little more on Couth, it's 14%. It might be. It might be. <laughs> <laughs> It'll get the job done. <laughs> yeah. It, it's basically like Franciscan monk wine. Yeah. Right. <laughs> um, episode. From episode four, we had the question, what animal do the wolf pack project 
to parent and Elise to show them the way to their meal? Mm-hmm. The answer is a big old stag. Yes. Or so. just a stag. You can ju- we, we were happy with just a stag. I yes. added a big old. <laughs> yes, little flashbacks to uh, to Harry Potter um, with a stag appearing to guide the way, right? Yeah, absolutely. Sure, but this came first, so technically no. <laughs> technically Harry Potter I ripped off this, if you really want to go there. Oh, I'm absolutely certain the Harry Potter books uh, ripped this off, but, uh, <laughs> but I guess the movie visuals were before the TV show here. Right? True, so fair, there fair, you go. fair, there fair. You go. What came first, the chicken or the egg, the Harry Potter or the Wheel of Time? The wheel weaves in the, in the, as the wheel wills, I guess. I guess so. Oh, look at that, you ladies and gentlemen <laughs> and fellow wheelies. No comeback on that attempt. one. <gasps> Oh, Oof. I did. I did kind of muff that up uh, in the middle of it. <laughs> uh, no one heard it. It's fine. Moving on to the next question. Yes, episode five. The question: What aspect of civilization does Elias Wolfbrother miss most? Of course, it's beer. And anybody who takes part in our pub quiz questions will always know there'll be a question about beer or wine um, if it's in the episode, be. right? As much as we can do. Yeah, we've already had two uh, <laughs> for this season so far, for Will of Time Season 2. <laughs> exactly. On to question six. What is the prison where Egwene is held known as? It is the Kennels. Oh, I remember being really frustrated that you chose this as the question because we couldn't know, talk about <laughs> how disrespectful and horrible um, this is as a name to all of the, the captured uh, characters in there. You know, Egwene effectively being treated like a dog and all of them being held in the kennels rather than a prison. So, um, yeah, I remember this being a, a really uh, interesting moment within uh, within episode six. Yeah, no, definitely. Episode seven, question. What game is Logain playing when Lan comes to visit? It is a Game of Stones. Yes, not a Game of Thrones, Game of Stones. No. Yes. Yep, very close, but not the same. <laughs> and the final question will be available after the episode airs. Because Derek forgot to take it and put it in, <laughs> into the document. I have it here. And the eighth and final question is, what name does Dane Barnhold call Perrin, first in recognition, then in anger? Yeah, interestingly, he calls him Two Rivers because that's where he's from, of course. So, yeah. um, But it was really interesting to see him use that uh, when he meets Perrin first and then uh, calling that in anger from then on. So it's like his vengeance name for him. Yeah, two Rivers! Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. I'll get you for killing my father. Wow, yes. absolutely. Mm-hmm. A few less entries uh, for this one because the, the questions are a bit more difficult uh, in this in this show for for Wheel of Time season two uh, as well, which is fine. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. But our potential winning entries come from Coffee and Vodka, Doctor Bob Phillips, Daniela Chasseur, and Victor Elias Van Doom. Very good. Yes, just four uh, entrants with all the answers to the questions correct. Uh, so, Chris. Fire away. Hey, Google, randomly choose a number between one and four. Here's a random number. One. One. Ha ha ha. Yes. Coffee and vodka will be listening to the dulcet tones of Rosamund Pike, Moraine herself, reading the first two books of The Wheel of Time by Robert Jordan over on Audible. Fantastic. Great stuff, Coffee and Vodka. Congratulations. Yeah. Congratulations, Coffee and Vodka. And thanks so much to everyone else for uh, your entries. Uh, good stuff. Uh, shall we move on to our wild student union bar quiz with uh, the Gen V quiz? Absolutely. Yes. Time to get back to the world of the boys for Gen V. Get it. Got it. Good. Still one of my favourites uh, from yeah. that season. <laughs> Still love it. It says every time, get it, got it, get yeah. it. It was in the original trailer. I've heard it about a hundred times since and still love it. Uh, great yeah. stuff. But we're going to start out with a few bits of feedback and a review. This is our most recent um, podcast that we were covering. Um, we don't always get the best of reviews out there. Um, but do want to say The Boys is the biggest show on our network. Uh, in just the month of uh, of November, we got over 20,000 uh, listeners to The Boys, so it is absolutely our biggest podcast. So sometimes uh, our podcast might rub people up the wrong way, or some people listen, and it's not for them. Um, but uh, Viv Vision decided to leave a one-star review for us. Do you know why, guys? Um, the title of the review was Not Explicit, One Star. <laughs> he goes on to say, I get doing a podcast on a very popular show, but when the show has its good number of mature content, I feel like you should stick with that 
and stick with what the show is offering and not go towards a family-friendly way when the show is anything but that. If you want to have family-friendly talks, do it towards family-friendly shows. Excellent stuff. Irony lost. No completely. Doubt. Completely lost. Uh, we do mention it often. Uh, we have a main feed, TV Podcast Industries, where all of our podcasts are on it. Uh, that is a general audience feed. It's up to 15s. Um, so that's the that's the rating we have against it. If we do curse on one of our podcasts that goes in that feed, I either have to edit it in one feed and not put it on the other feeds, which I'm not going to be able to do, unfortunately, uh, or we just keep it all the same. We talk about it the same way. I don't think there's any impact lost. And to be honest, I don't really know what how different an explicit version of our podcast would be. John, can you think of what an explicit version of the Gen V podcast with me and you hosting would be that was different to how we actually recorded it? There would be less uh, innuendo. Um, there would be. And more just explicit effing and blinding, I guess. Maybe. I guess that's all. You yeah. just say, oh, and then the effing did this, or yeah. you, you know, whatever, I guess. I can think yeah. of another way to make it more explicit. <laughs> <laughs> which we're also not going to do on a podcast yeah no that would be for only fans i guess <laughs> it might yeah. be it might be tv podcast industries nights oh after Ooh, dark yes, mature yeah after dark <laughs> yeah. I, I honestly for this one i i don't i i fully understand don't think the irony is fully translated um for me personally it's i actually enjoy innuendo more than just straight out kind of I love in your end there as well. I know it, it is a whole other thing. Um, see, it's more fun. It <laughs> have is more fun with it. We can get um, more creative with it. Yeah. That's, no, that's don't the... don't get me wrong. I swear, like a sailor sometimes. Mm-hmm. But I also uh, having a fifteen uh, uh, limit on our on our uh, target audience and our feed does make me think and use a greater vocabulary and grammar than I sometimes do. I am sometimes forced to think like a walking thesaurus and really go, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> what can I say? Did you say T Rex? <laughs> <laughs> he saw us, my good sir, not a T Rex. We might need to get Chris a new thesaurus for Christmas. Why? <laughs> yeah, just an updated one. Just this updated is from one, yeah. ye old 1901. <laughs> ah, there you go. Shivering me tempers. But we do, of course, appreciate the fee- feedback for Vision. I presume uh, he did stop listening I to must, the podcast I, I uh, at that so. stage because. Um, yeah, hopefully you and you choose the podcast that you like. We've been uh, podcasting for over 800 episodes. I think, honestly, it would be hard to switch my brain into one podcast. That's an explicit podcast. I've done some podcasts before with uh, Podcastica. Uh, as as you guys know, I, I, I used to do um, some uh, podcasts on The Walking Dead with them. Um, and they are an explicit show where you can curse. And I find it quite difficult to just switch over when I'm sitting in front of my mic. I'm usually stopping myself from cursing. So... It's probably just easier that we keep it all the same, right? Yeah, we do abs- so many podcasts, absolutely. it'd be difficult to twist for just one. And I so. wouldn't mind, but we're complete potty mouths in normal life. So <laughs> uh, I, I guess we're just uh, attuned and conditioned now to, yeah. to doing yeah. it in uh, a family-friendly way, Derek. <laughs> 800 episodes, dude. 800 episodes. Yeah. <laughs> Great stuff. We also got some feedback over on Spotify on our final episode chat, John. Uh, just want to mention this because we didn't have an opportunity to uh, to go back and amend the podcast. Um, both Sinister Dexter and Smithers both pointed out, you're wrong about not seeing Translucent in the flesh. When Huey had him in the cage, he became visible for a short time. So that correct something that we weren't sure about on the, that last yeah, episode so absolutely. when his son becomes visible after being knocked out by uh, marie moreau it should have been as much of a surprise because that's the same thing that happened to his father translucent and um, so we weren't sure whether you ever got to see translucent in the flesh yeah. but you did fully naked flesh uh, in the first season yes, yes. Yeah. and in many many pieces later Yes, you did. Yes, you did. Great stuff. Thanks so much for that feedback. And just to mention again, for those of you that do listen to us over on Spotify, you can leave your thoughts on any of our episodes over there. There's a little Q&A button uh, where you can send in feedback directly through there as well. Good. Yeah, and you can also leave us a review. Throw some stars up there because you know what? It does help with discoverability. Yes, it does. And given that one star review we got over on uh, Apple Podcasts, it'd be great if we got a couple of five star reviews to push that off. But then again, a one star review saying that uh, that. It's not an explicit podcast. Isn't really that bad for us, is it? <laughs> Good stuff. Well, let's get on to our Gen V pub quiz. At the prize for this one, the fellow boy or girl, or variation thereupon, with the most answers right, will get an exclusive Godolkin University Letterman jacket. Uh, this is the 
the big one. Yeah, this is on its way to us at the moment uh, from the wonderful friends over at Prime Video uh, who were able to reserve one of those uh, from a pr- promotion event. So once we get that in, uh, we'll get that sent out to the, uh, yeah, to the person absolutely. with the, the, all the answers. Yeah, Good stuff. So, fellow boys and girls, on to the answers for the questions in our student bar quiz. First off, question one. What year was the Red River Institute for Orphan Soups established? Mm -hmm. It was 1965, same year as Chris's birthday. Yeah, so close to 1969. So close. That's Chris being significantly older than us. I know. That's why I said it, because he's not. But I will give you some real facts. It is the same year that Godalkin University is established in this show. And is also one of the best albums by the Afghan Whigs. So go out and buy that if you haven't heard that. That is true. 1965. Uh, But there is, of course, a reason why Red River Institute and Godalkin University were established the same year, which we find out as the show went on. So uh, all planned. Question number two. Which band did Andre's father, Polarity, save at Lollapalooza when he was young? The answer was Matchbox 20. Yeah, I didn't know he was that old. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> well, <Dig at them. laughs> I love Matchbox 20. Uh, I did back in the late 90s. Yeah. I was going to say the late 1900s. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> late 90s. Same time, roughly, as... All that kind of vibe going on, as well as Goo Goo like, Dolls. Was, yeah, exactly. It was that kind of. Yeah, Goo Goo Dolls thing. are another example yeah. of this terrible um, bands ah. that just formed to try and ride the wave of good rock music in the nineties. And I like Goo Goo Dolls as well. I know, I know. You like well, one song, one song. Like Goo Goo Dolls. I know <laughs> yeah, you do. Exactly. You didn't even need to say it, John. Uh, and probably the same with Matchbox Twenty. No, no. I actually bought albums for Matchbox Twenty. <laughs> Name me three songs. I've not listened to them since the 1998. <laughs> fantastic, fantastic. That's why I've never... I was them. riding the wave. I love it, I love it. Uh, on to question three for episode three. The question was, what free drink does Kate want to get at the Professor Birkenhoff Memorial Gala? Hashtag Think Brink. Um, the drink that she was trying to get was Grey Goose Vodka, of course. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so continuing our trend of if there's a drink-related question, we're going to do it. <laughs> mm-hmm. Question number four. What two signs does Tech Knight observe on Dean Shetty to show she has something to hide as he questions her in her office? Bonus point. What other thing does Tech Knight observe about her? The answers were bead of sweat on the brow, adrenaline seeping from the pores, and he also notices she's ovulating. Yes, uh, Tech Knight using his powers uh, and very special abilities there to really get under the skin of Shetty. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, little uh, does he know that she is more than a match for him. Absolutely. Yeah, really like that sort of uh, confrontation after this threat from him. Mm-hmm. Uh, but on to question five. What ranking at Godolkin University does Emma reach after her TikTok growth spurt? The answer is 88 Yes, it is. That's pretty high for um for a, a newbie in uh, in the, the Godalkin University. Definitely, um, Marie's obviously a massive surprise, but that's because she saved uh, loads of people on campus, according to the press. Um, whereas Emma has moved up in the rankings just by uh, her big growth spurt. So, like that, like that. That's very cool. Question six on episode six: How many years does Dean Shetty discover that Kate was locked in her room by her mother following the incident with her brother Caleb? Was nine years locked in her room. Yeah, you could see why Kate went absolutely uh, crazy for revenge, to be honest. Kind of. You can definitely see why she fell in love with the idea of somebody treating her like a human being. Well, that as like well. Like Shetty's pretending to do. Uh, and then we realize she's just treating her as a weapon. That's fair. But she's also absolutely crazy. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Again, st- being stuck in her room for nine years probably would drive someone pretty crazy. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. On to question seven. What does Dean Shetty have in her cupboards? And it's not British tea. <laughs> the answer is edibles. Yes. Of course. Of course. Every good British person has those in their cupboards. Yes. Outside. Beside the tea, of course. Beside. She likes to get a little high, I guess. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I think that's what makes um, Andre pretty impressed with Dean Shetty for a second. <laughs> well, exactly. For a second. 
<laughs> the dean of our school has edibles in the prep. She probably needs it after dealing with students like 24 uh-huh, 7. Probably. I was going to say, like all good teachers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Final question for episode eight What is written on the front of Sam's sweatshirt? The answer is vintage supply. Yes, much like where he got that sweatshirt from, it is vintage. We have a number of entries who got all of the questions right. Yes, lots of different types of questions uh, in this round. Uh, in, this, in this round, I say, in this uh, in this show, uh, lots of observation questions, question about alcohol, of course. Um, but we did get loads of entries, but a couple of the ones that we got in, of course, uh, didn't have the right answers. So it is down to uh, Will Walton, Coffee and Vodka, Vaud Von Doom, Dr. Bob Phillips, Pete DeBalatis, Jasmine Wang, and Moist Chewbacca. Excellent name. Which has to be the best name uh, for an entrant for uh, for, <laughs> for this rent. It's Chewbacca, but only looking as they just got out of the shower. Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, I guess that's like a uh, white dog. Uh, Solo, I think, um, when he has the yeah. shower with Han Solo, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Congratulations, everyone, for getting through to our uh, Etombola part of uh, the student bar quiz. Mm-hmm. Chris, take it away. Yes. Hey, Google. Randomly choose a number between one and seven. Four. Four. Congratulations, Dr. Bob Phillips. Much like Dean Shetty, are going to be walking away with something fabulous. Yes. Not just British tea. A selection of the seven dildos uh, of Vault 7. <laughs> I know. That was I, I not the prize, John. That no, was not the it prize. It wasn't. No. It's a selection of edible. Oh, uh, no, it's not no, that. That's I, also no. not the prize. No, no. Okay. <laughs> not the prize. I will be in contact with you, of course, Dr. Bob, uh, to get your details to get that Godolkin University Letterman jacket out to you in the next couple of, couple of weeks, yeah? <laughs> I know Christmas time at the moment uh, might take a little while to get it to well, your yeah, home address, strange. but uh, we should have it at you in the next couple of weeks. Uh, great stuff. That wraps up all four of our pub quizzes and all four of the shows that we've been talking about and uh, been giving out pub quizzes. We will have more uh, pub quizzes coming up in 2024. Uh, Going to give it a little break uh, for What If, uh, the next show that we're covering here on the podcast. But we will be back, of course, in 2024 uh, with more great pub quizzes. Yeah, a big thank you to all the fellow quizzes who have sent in uh, their answers to the questions of these four pub quizzes Mm -hmm. uh, that we've gone through. Uh, It's really great to get your engagement uh, and chit chat as well, because we don't sometimes just get the... The answers, we also mm-hmm. get a bit of feedback as well. So all good stuff. So, yeah, I hope you had a lot of fun. Um, we, we always have a lot of fun putting together the questions for the pub quiz uh, yeah. as we go. And I hope you had a lot of fun. Um, I, I will say my favorite uh, entry that I got was I got one email in that just said 1965. Had no reference to what show it was, no reference to the fact that it was part of the Gen V pub quiz or anything like that. Just an email in that said 1965. And they never sent another email to us again for the rest of the series. <laughs> but that, so there's actually a secret code that was yep. not even an entry that was like the Illuminati are reaching out to you and you failed exactly <laughs> yes thank you so much everyone for all your entries thank you so much for taking part and if you didn't take part why not take part next year when we do our follow up pub quizzes we will be back with what if season 2 on Disney Plus but we'll also in 2024 be covering a host of shows fingers crossed part 2 of Invincible season 2 we will be covering Echo and a number of Star Wars shows because it all looks like they're all coming out next year dates TBC Mm -hmm. to be confirmed because we have no dates yet but we'll see everyone for what if because it's going to be a good one fingers crossed well what if it's going to be a good show we know it's going to be a good show. Absolutely. It yes. It's, it is a good show. It has. It is going to do a 1602 episode, mm. uh, which I mm. cannot wait for. Uh, fingers crossed it's a goodie. Yeah, absolutely. Based on the uh, Neil Gaiman um, comic book for Marvel 1602, which is uh, definitely one of our favorite alternate verse uh, version of Marvel. So it'll be really exciting. Still unsure exactly how we're going to be covering uh, What If, because uh, episodes are being released from the 22nd of December, one a day for nine days. So um, that's going to be very difficult to podcast on when we're all traveling in a way. So um, we'll get back to you. Of course, we will uh, We will release episodes as soon as we possibly can and as close to uh, the show as possible. But if you want to interact with us, tell us what you thought 
of the episodes, you can always email us to feedback at tvpodcastindustries.com or, of course, pop on over and join us in our Facebook group at facebook.com slash groups slash tvpodcastindustries. Thank you so much for joining us for all of the podcasts we've been doing uh, throughout 2023. But, of course, a huge congratulations to all the winners of our pub quizzes this year as well. Yes, absolutely. Uh, big congratulations to Felipe Florencio, to Le- Liza Winrich, to Coffee and Vodka, and of course to Dr. Bob Phillips. Mm-hmm. Well done. I'll be in contact with you this week to get your details for where to send your goodies. Excellent stuff. And once again, thank you to everybody who's joined us throughout the 800 episodes so far of TV Podcast Industries. Actually, 810. We just didn't get around to recording the 800th episode when it actually happened. <laughs> I, I can't even remember which one it was. I think it was Loki episode four, maybe, right in the middle of Loki. So uh, it didn't seem special enough to celebrate our 800th episode. So thanks so much for all of you who've joined us. All of you have shared the podcast. All of you have interacted and sent feedback with it to us. All of you have entered the pub quizzes uh, over the time. And of course, to my fellow co host John and Chris, uh, for joining me over the course of the uh, 800 episodes as well. So it's been lots of fun. Yeah. And lots more to come. Absolutely. Uh, thank you so much, fellow defenders, industrialists, and Gothamites, of course, as well, mm-hmm. uh, for all the support over 800 uh, episodes. I was almost going to say 800 years. Um, <laughs> no, not that, uh, that, was, that would put me very old. Very Absolutely. old indeed. Yes, thank you so much to all of our listeners, to my fellow co-hosts. I would not be able to do this without you because I would just be talking to myself and no one wants to hear that. <laughs> yes, and a special thanks to Derek, our illustrious editor, who does the podcast with us and then toils away into the wee hours by himself with red Absolutely. wine or white wine or just a big thing of coffee. Mm-hmm. So yes, send him your love, fellow industrious. You know you need to because... We love him as much. Thank you so much. And we'll see you later this month for What If. Absolutely. Coffee in the morning, wine at night, Chris. That's that's how I, I uh, can tell the difference between <laughs> morning and night uh, when I'm editing loads of podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> and, but it's also an Irish coffee in the middle of the day. Right, so that's kind of midday, that kind of when it's coffee and alcohol. Yeah, not while I'm working, though. Uh, okay. Yeah, I, I was going to say, this is really starting to get dubious with Derek's <laughs> drinking habits. Uh-huh. He has champagne for breakfast, don't you know? <laughs> it's a mimosa, my dear. Mimosa! <laughs> I love it. all the way. Uh, with that, we'll close out our podcast. Thanks so much for joining us. Talk to you again next time. Yes, thank you so much, and we'll speak to you again soon. Yes, Merry Christmas, fellow listeners. It's great to go through these quizzes with you. Uh, Keep those answers rolling in for 2024. Of course, until we see one another again soon under the mistletoe, keep watching, keep listening, keep watching, keep quizzing, and thanks for all your support. Bye. 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 You were right. You were right. I was wrong. You were right.